Hi everyone, so I have a video today about baking um, under my eyes. It's something I've been pretty reluctant to even try just because I have a lot of just kind of folds and lines under my eyes. They tend to be on the dry side anyway, so the thought of like piling on a bunch of powder seems crazy. So what I'm going to do today is use my Bobbi Brown, um, what's this called, just corrector in light bisque. and. I'm going to do one side with just kind of a very light dusting of powder and then the other side like fully heavily powdered <laughs> and <clears throat> we'll see how it looks texture wise what my thoughts are you know different powders and whatnot different concealers and what I think about it so I'm just going to get started so um I don't use a ton of concealer that can be also fairly relevant um, just because my under eye area really does not take a lot of makeup very well. Um, it tends to start looking very dry and textured and cakey and weird. So I try to focus it just on this outer corner. I have a bit of kind of discoloration and where the, the darkness is the strongest on the inner part. And then just maybe a tiny bit to kind of connect the two, but not much. That's been my latest kind of strategy. Um, I do have kind of large, um, I think they're called like tear troughs. So that can kind of accentuate the look of the darker circle. Um, so I try to just brighten that up a little bit, but um, I don't love the look of like really bright under eyes on me. I don't think it looks very good. Um, and that's just on my face personally. I think it looks really nice on a lot of people, but I don't love it on me. So what I'm going for is just to kind of cancel out some of that darkness brighten up that kind of divot and I'll do that with all doing all those things without it looking dry and heavy so this concealer will crease on me if I don't set it with a powder and when my under eye area was even drier when I was younger um, it seems to have balanced out a little bit more now to be kind of normal to dry um, even this concealer I wouldn't set it with a powder and by the end of the day it would look dry so now at least it's not so dry so it's a little easier to work with so I can put powder under there without it looking awful so what I'm going to use I believe today is the it cosmetics bye bye pores powder I used to have the Laura Mercier loose setting powder and translucent but I finished it and I have not repurchased it since because in general I do like this IT Cosmetics powder for how it gives me long lasting power. I don't love how matte it can look and sometimes, especially in this case, it can look very white. Um, same with the uh, RCMA No Color Powder. For this one, um, I feel like I don't get as much lasting power as the it Cosmetics, and this can also look quite white if I'm doing that like full on baking method. And even though I'm very fair, I still feel like it's just too white, and that bright under eye situation I don't love. So I'm gonna go ahead and it cos use the It Cosmetics, and I'm going to, I think, just dust on a little bit of powder with a brush on the right side and then I'm going to, you know, pile on some powder a la baking method on the left. I'm going to try a sponge. Sometimes I find with a sponge I get too much, which is kind of like a fine line, right? What's too much? Well, for me, there is a definite line of too much. So I try to smooth out any creasing and go in with a lot of powder. All 
right, so I'm, I'm going to deem that enough. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my makeup. Normally I would not powder first, but I just wanted to kind of get all this done in one step on this video. I'm going to record a different video about a foundation, hopefully with a demo, and then I'll come back and we'll brush it off and zoom in and see how everything looks. Okay, so I have my foundation on. It's the Makeup Forever Ultra HD in Y215. And so the powder has been on under my eyes for a good 20 minutes now. So as you can see, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of powder left. So I'm gonna zoom in here for you. Just taking a peek, this eye had the a lot of powder and this one just had it kind of dusted on. This side, it's the concealer has creased again and this side there are no creases. Um, as far as kind of accentuating those lines, I would say this one looks slightly more obvious where the creases are. Whenever you put any product on those creases on looser, creepier skin, it definitely is going to make it look a tiny bit more pronounced, but I feel like it's, it's, it's acceptable. Um, this side looks slightly more kind of less creepy. You still see the lines and creases, obviously, because I mean, they're there, they're, they're not going away. Um, but they look a little bit more plump and not so like wavy, if that makes sense, not so creepy. But from a distance, I don't think it's really that noticeable. Um, I feel like a lot of those creases up close feel really noticeable, but then, you know, even speaking distance, Unless it's somebody that's like into makeup, I don't even know that they would be looking that closely at underneath your eyes. So when I smile, I don't know that it's any different. You know, there's a lot of bunching up there, but they both both sides kind of bunch up in in a similar manner. So I would say the main difference to me is the creasing. So my final thoughts. Um, I feel like it is. A useful technique with some caveats. I cannot use the absolute boatloads of powder that other people on YouTube and Instagram use. Um, it's just gonna make my under eyes look very dry and I prefer you know a good amount of powder but not too much <laughs> so more than just kind of dusting on with a powder brush. Now I will say I have two concealers that work for me without needing any powder and I feel like they look just as good or sometimes better than an emollient under eye concealer that has been somewhat baked. I don't feel like there's really any difference for me whether or not it's baked. It doesn't smooth out anything. You know, those lines, that loose skin is there and there is no getting around it. And if I can use less product on it, I think it really does look better. So the two concealers that I can use that will not crease without powder are MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NC15 and Shape Tape, Tarte Shape Tape in Fair. Both of those, as long as I don't apply too much, and as you can see, I don't use a ton of concealer, um, both of those sit nicely under my eyes without creasing without any powder. And if I can use only one product under my eyes as opposed to two, it's gonna look better just for me because I have kind of that looser under eye skin, which sounds awful, but it is what it is, you know? Um, <clears throat> so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, maybe you can find a concealer that works better for you uh, you know, so many people say what an amazing kind of smoothing effect the baking has and I really don't feel like it's better than something that you can wear that doesn't require powder. Um, and if I powder something like that or really any other concealer, if I use a ton of powder, it starts looking very dry. So I need to use a very emollient under eye concealer in order for the kind of baking method to really work for my eyes under eyes personally but they are on the drier side and I have a lot more kind of lines and creases and whatnot that I'm working with. So there, that I think is all my thoughts about this. I've been kind of contemplating doing this video for a few weeks now just because I've been kind of practicing with different powders and different techniques using a sponge or using a brush and trying to develop my, my opinion, my thoughts on whether or not it's worthwhile and I feel like 
in the right with the right products in the right situation with the right prep it can be workable even if you have a little bit more creasy dry crepey under eyes but probably not the same as how other people on YouTube do it um, so yeah just kind of keep that in mind if you don't have the same skin as they do if you're not as and it's not even I think a matter of being young or older certainly having younger skin makes a difference because everything's a little bit tighter but some people you know like my three-year-old he has since he was a baby he's had creases under his eyes that's just like how our eyes are set up and if you have a lot of folds and creases it may not be as smoothing as it is on someone that just has kind of a flat surface under there with very few folds and lines so just something to think about um, let me know if this video was helpful if you'd like to see any other sort of tests in this kind of thing um, in this kind of vein maybe things that seem to work for younger people uh, or very smooth skinned people versus somebody that's a little bit older or has a little bit looser of skin let me know if you have any uh, things you'd like to see tested I would be happy to do those for you so I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and liking and subscribing and all that stuff. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you soon.